Hi, I'm Lauren Malhoyt, and I'm here with another ACI 101 video. In this, we'll be talking about ACI programmability. And don't worry if you're not a programmer, you don't have to be. There's a lot of things you can do with ACI with little to no experience in programming. Now, do you have to use coding to be a network administrator these, these days? Absolutely not. You can always use the CLI or the GUI. But once you understand how everything comes together in ACI, I think you'll see some of the major advantages and time savings you'll experience when you utilize the REST APIs. And the best part, I can explain pretty much all you need to know about the basics in about five minutes. So here we go. The first thing to understand is that everything in ACI, logical, virtual, or physical, is an object. This is what we call the MIT, or the Management Information Tree. And we have to be able to access these objects somehow. So we need to know their location. Now, if you're familiar with browsing the internet, then this will definitely not be a foreign concept to you. We basically go to a URL. For example, if we have a tenant called Cisco, in order to go to its location, we go to the following URL. Notice this also ends with the .json. When working with APIs, we will usually be working with .json or .xml files. Now, if we can access our object, we will need to do some sort of action. If you've ever heard the term CRUD, which is create, read, update, delete, that's basically what we're doing here, except the actions are called get, post, put, and delete. So for example, we could create an endpoint group by using the post action or post method to our tenant. Now, how do we do that? Well, we use what's called a REST client, or at least that's one of the ways we do it. One of the popular ones, which can be downloaded for free, is Google Postman. As we can see, we have our location here. Now, this location is actually pointing to where we'd log into the APIC, because even though we're going through the APIs, we still need to authenticate for security reasons. We also have our action here, which is post. So this is kind of creating a login, essentially. If we were creating an EPG or something like that, we would also use the post method. If we were deleting an EPG, then we would use the delete. If we just wanted to read some information, then we'd use the get method. And finally, we have our body. This is where we specify what we're posting. In this case, it's a login. Then we just click send, and we can actually save these REST calls for later use as well, so we don't have to retype them every time we need to use them. We don't necessarily have to use the REST client to incorporate programmability. We can actually just run something like a Python script with REST calls in it. But this is the best way of showing what the REST calls look like. Also something to keep in mind, if you have to repeat a task more than once, consider doing it programmatically. The next thing you're probably wondering is where do we come up with all that gibberish that was in the body of the REST call? Well, there are actually a few places. One way is we can consult the documentation to at least get started. But really, that can be kind of cumbersome. We can also use GitHub and look for scripts and programming ideas from Cisco employees, partners, and other customers that are posted here. We can easily reuse these scripts and tweak them for our own environments. And even if we can't do that, though, we can use what's called the API Inspector, which is built into ACI. It's essentially a logging tool. Anytime we make a change or create an object within ACI, the exact location URL, method, or action, and the body will be shown in the API inspector. We can simply then copy that out of the API inspector, paste it into our REST client or into a script, and run that code. We'll get into all of these in some demo videos posted in the same series. Here are some reference materials if you'd like some continued learning. And thank you so much for watching.